Jesus has interceded for us. Now, Simon, I have prayed for you. Okay? I have prayed for you. So you have to know this fact about Jesus' intercession. When Jesus prayed for us, okay, interceded for us, it is meant to accomplish two things. Okay? Number one is to protect us from losing our faith. Am I right? This is the persevering love of God. So Satan, at any point of time, you know, he will want to devour our faith, you know, even to strip us of our faith, if that's possible. But the thing is, Jesus' intercession, you know, stop him from doing so. So if you are in Christ, it is not possible for you to lose your faith totally. Amen to that? Okay, that's the first fact, okay? But it also accomplished something else. Jesus' intercession also accomplished something else, that he wants to give you spiritual blessings to the full. To the full. But for that to happen, for that, for you to be able to receive his spiritual blessing to the full, when he intercedes for you, you must be brought to the reality of your faith. If you are really not there, you must know you are not there. Where are you right now? So with that, you will receive the full measure of his intercession. You understand what I'm saying? Can you get what I'm saying? All right. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you now. You see, the problem with Peter is it's not Satan. It's not Satan. The problem with him is his false sense of his faith. He thought he is someone there. No, when you think you are someone there, now God can intercede for you, right? He intercedes for you. But He cannot give you the spiritual blessing when you are in a form of self-deceived state, complacency state. So He brings you down. His intercession is powerful, it's definite. So even when Satan takes the chance, you no, know, this fellow has a false sense of his faith. So I'm coming for him. This is the chance now. For three and a half years, he didn't know a thing about where his faith is. So Satan asked, God, now is the time. Now I'm going to devour his faith. I ask for permission. I'm going to devour his faith. All right? So Jesus intercedes to the Father. No, protect your loved one. First, protect him from losing his faith. And then the, the second, Father, I pray for this fellow. He's going to be of great use to you. So do to him what you will want. So the father allow him to be tested. He denied the Lord three times, brought to so much shame and defeat. He was brought to the lowest point, ground zero. And then from there, true brokenness come. Then the work of the Holy Spirit can fill him to the full. And the day of Pentecost came. That's why this fellow rised up and preached through the strength, the courage of the Holy Spirit. Not of his own, but of God. Amen? You get what I'm saying? Okay, so at any point of time, how do you apply this? When God prays for you now, when God intercedes for you, now you have many issues in your life. You have many issues in your life now. But when God prayed for you, he really bring you down to ground zero. So don't be afraid. When God strip you bare, with some trials, you feel, I can't take it anymore. It's too much for me. Now God is doing something. He's doing something there to reduce you to true brokenness, humility, godly sorrows, so that when you reach that point, you can receive His spiritual blessing to the full, to the max. And that's what God wants to do. In our lives. Young people, you get what I'm saying? So let's try to apply this now, okay? Let's try to apply this now. If you have sufferings, no? or let me say, if you find, your hey, Pastor Vincent, my faith has been stagnated for years. I don't feel I'm, I'm growing much, you know. Mm, maybe it's because I don't have much sufferings. 
Now, do you think in America people don't have sufferings? James said, we have trials of many kinds. I don't believe we don't have sufferings. We all have sufferings. We have a fair amount of sufferings. You know, in, in America, you know, out of... I just read the other day, you know, uh, like for every year, one in ten percent suffer depression. Every year, every year. But you were going to talk about the statistic and the whole, you know, like out of ten percent, every six to seven percent will suffer depression or some sort of uh, stress or mental related problems in their life. You know? Every six to seven percent. Now, the problem is, depression is so... It's such an intense, it is such a torment thing, you know. It torments the heart. So it's a great suffering, okay? It's the suffering on the inside. But the thing is, why are we not growing in faith? Even with so much suffering. So the question is this. So if you go by this formula or, or whatever principle that you said, you know, Suffering calm, produce perseverance, I tell you. The problem is not because you don't have suffering, but it's the way we deal with suffering. We have trusted in our own mechanism, the way of coping mechanism, you know. We pop pills, you know. We try to suppress ourselves. We try to, you know, distract ourselves. We use a lot of other things. Uh, um, we... We try to have security. We trust in like social security and all this stuff. You know. So the thing is, suffering is supposed to come, hit you, and then you're reduced to ground zero. And then all you do is you just trust in God's promise. And over there, perseverance develops in you, character and the hope comes in you. you know, God is going to do that in you. you know, his loved ones, the way... He will refine and consecrate the person. It's true, that channel. But now, when, when you trust in other coping mechanisms, you're going around and around, you know, not hit, totally hit. You still have something else to trust. That's the thing.